Now that we've learned how to create terrain, I'm going to discuss a little bit about how to move verts around to adjust that terrain uh, so you can get it exactly how you want it. Uh, we'll go up to file first and I need to load in some terrain. This is a good place to explain uh, these here will be the last four saves you've done. Normally number one will be your latest save so you can just click on number one and load that in. The problem comes if you've had a crash. Uh, you may have saved the course, then had a crash, then you reboot APCD. This won't necessarily be your last latest course uh, because it won't have updated the list because of the crash. So if you're unsure, go to open and pick the course manually. Make sure you have got your very latest course because once or twice I've clicked on on the number one, uh, started work and thought, well, I know I did this and I know I did that and saved it and it's not there. So um, that's one little tip. Be wary if you've had a crash. So anyway, I'll click that. We don't want to save anything. Uh, so we've got our terrain created. Uh, and we now need to know how to move the verts around. Uh, so we'll go to Terrain and select Vertex. And before we start moving things, we really need to understand the X, Y and Z axis, uh, which explains where the verts are. So basically we've got an X axis which runs along the side here, a Y axis which runs along another side. So we've got coordinates a bit like a game of battleships or chess, uh, whereas this point here will be so far along, so far up on the X and Y. And then the third dimension, which is the Z axis, gives us our height above or below sea level. So normally I try and keep the top on the X, Y, and the perspective view on the Z. That way we can move things around left and right, up and down on the surface there in the top view and on the perspective view we can alter the heights of things. Uh, there is occasions where you will need to change this from Z and from XY uh, the other way round. Um, they're pretty few and far between, but I will mention them as we come along to them. Uh, to set the X, Y and Z, we need to right click on the labels of the active windows, as we did to get the displays. And you'll see here X, Y, Z, X, Y, Y, Z, Z, X. You really, 99% of the time, are only going to be either using X, Y together or Z. Uh, the others, I've never used these two. Uh, occasionally I've used X and Y on its own, but very, very rarely. So that's how you set them. Just click on them and you'll see it will change. The yellow shows the currently selected, so it's now on YZ. I need to put it back to XY. So that's that. Now, also, once you've got a point selected, you'll notice there's three numbers down in this bottom corner. And these are the distances on the X, Y and Z of the point you've selected. So I've got this point selected at the moment. This is saying 2150. That's the distance in feet from this edge along to where the point is. 1125.83. That's the distance in feet from the bottom edge up to where that is. And the last number, the z-axis, 37.2, that's the feet above sea level. So it's 37 feet above sea level on that point there in our mesh. Zoom in a bit. So you can see that points. If I pick a point higher up, that's now 57 
0.3 feet above sea level uh, because we're on slightly higher ground so these two numbers I've never ever looked at no use really at all as far as I'm concerned anyway I'm sure there must be a use but I, I've never needed it this number however you you will be looking at a lot uh, it's really useful for all sorts of all sorts of things uh, so be aware that that's there now as to moving our verts around once we've got our X, Y and our Z set correctly. Just to the right of the select option, there is a move option. So if I click move, you'll see when I go on a selected point, if I turn on this active window, if I hover over that, I'm now getting the same symbol that's up here, the four arrows, because I can now click and drag and actually move that point in the XY direction which is these directions if I click on this point on this I can pull it up and down on the Z axis because we're set to the Z axis up here now one of the beginners mistakes if you do switch this about to X and Y and to Z is you'll find occasionally this will be on XY if I pick an end uh, the, there if I pull that like that it looks like I'm pulling it down um, and that looks like I'm pulling it up but what I'm actually doing is pulling it in the XY axis. So you'll notice if I pull it like that and let go, it hasn't actually moved down at all. On the XY, you'll see it's it's actually been pulled in this direction. So you can easily make mistakes thinking you've moved something down or up that you intended to. But because you're on the XY up here, you won't have done it. And things can get in a mess and you, you might not even realize when you... When you're just starting uh, and you'll later spot something and think well why is that over there uh, and quite often it's because you've got your axis uh, set wrong so always try and keep this on the z axis if you can because this is a screen i do all the height adjustments to uh, as i said before i tend to like this screen completely uncluttered uh, and i click my mouse wheel to see what the mesh and if I want to select verts I remember where they are and then I click and drag box select where it is to show it up and then I can grab it now that's just me because I'm a lazy what's it and I don't like going up and turning the verts on and turning the verts off and I like it to look as it's gonna look uh, but you'll probably want to turn your vert display on so go into display and verts you'll see you can see all, where every vert is uh, it's a lot easier to grab hold of them uh, just move over and the cursor changes to a cross when you've got it in the right position left click and select and then you've got hold of it the thing I don't like about um, the vert display is it really doesn't show the slopes uh, at all it's hard you look at this the, these dots it's really hard to tell where the grounds going up and down whereas if you click the mesh you instantly see all the slope you can see it in a vivid 3d which you can't really see apart from where the, the shadows are on the really high bits you really don't get that feel with the uh, verts on so that's another reason I really don't like them on because they I find them off put off putting they they tend to distract um, and it really after a, after a little bit of practice it's no bothers at all to to look around and grab the exact vert you want I want to grab that pointy one up there and I know it's in here whoops ah now that is one reason to not do it my way you will occasionally instead of clicking in and empty space you'll click on a vert and grab it rather than an empty space 
and selecting like that. So I have actually demonstrated one reason not to use my method. Uh, I'll just undo that vert move. But anyway, that pointy one there, I've selected it. I could see where it was. Just by holding that mesh, I can see where it is. If I'm not 100% sure, I'll grab three or four of them like that. I've got the one in the middle I want. I can always hold control down and quickly box select off the ones I don't want. So I've got the one I want. So that's how I tend to do it. And I'll do it for multiple ones. So if I need to grab a row of three, I'll just spot where they are. I've missed the last one. So add shift and move along a bit. And I've got the three uh, that I was after. So basically you just click and hold and move and it will move the verts in the axis that you've got selected, which in this case is Z, so they're moving up and down. And you'll see as you move them in the bottom right hand corner, the height, we can instantly see it ticking up and down. That's in the minus now, so that's below sea level. So we can see exactly what height our ground is in the bottom area down here. So that's moving verts about. Uh, if you've created a mesh the way I said by uh, selecting different areas and setting different heights so that you get some hills some flat bits you'll probably find where the where the selected areas met there will be the odd vert I don't know if I've got any on here but there will be verts that don't really go as they should so you can just find little bits that shouldn't be as they are and move them you maybe that vert there I want to put it down a bit and the vert there grab hold of it so you can move whatever verts you like I don't want to move that I'll leave that there so I can smooth that down create a smoother slope down there uh, and you can manipulate the land exactly how you want it just by grabbing and moving the verts around uh, some of the other things you can do are rotate them scale them which are also handy I'm not sure whether we need to go into that just yet but I'll obviously show you uh, it's best to just learn things as you need them um, too much in your head at once I think is gonna cause problems but uh, we will discuss scaling and uh, rotating and other things a bit later um, one thing I will say when you select multiple verts the number you get here for the height will be the average of all the verts you select so if you select a vert like that one it's at 51.67 and that vert is at 68.71 feet. If we select them both, it will give us the average distance, which is 60.19 feet above sea level for the two. And one of the commands, the flatten key, which I might as well show you now, will what that will do is turn every vert you've selected into that average number. So if we select a whole load of that's at different heights and the average height is 68.43 if we click flatten which is this anvil symbol you'll see that moved and they're now all completely flat at 68.43 feet height uh, sometimes and that that's going to leave you with sharp edges if it happens to be near a, a large hill at one end and it flattens it down you'll suddenly get a great big cliff edge that you don't want so you might want to select uh, the verts there and smooth them down so you get a nice gentle smooth effect but you're obviously going to need this flattening uh, for doing water because water's going to be completely flat so all your water area should be flat also you'll be using it for teas because your tea area should be flat as well and if you're going to be planting uh, 3d buildings obviously they're usually built on fairly flat ground as well so you might want to flatten the land 
uh, before you put the 3D building down. Um, otherwise you'll find if the land slopes down, uh, you might have seen it when you've been playing Link sometimes, the 3D objects are on the ground at one end and you can see a dark black shadow because they're floating in the in the air at the other end and this is because uh, they were put on uneven ground so having your ground flat uh, is the easiest way to stop that happening. <laughs> 